Oh, man, I, I got it right off the first rip. All right. Trucker Dwayne in the building. Boy, boy. My G from the great state of Florida. I just came from Florida, <laughs> bro. I mean, I, I, I am not, man, to go down to Florida to, to, to visit, to have some fun, you know, soak up that sun. You know what I'm saying? Universal theme parks, all that good shit. But going down there right. as a truck driver, bro? Nah, man. Nah. Not a, <laughs> not a fan, man. Uh, before we get into anything, man, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where, where you came from, how you got into trucking and everything. Okay. Well, I'm born and raised in Miami, Florida. Uh, been trucking for about five, almost six years. I got into trucking coming straight out of uh, real estate. I'm a licensed real estate agent out of Florida. Did that for 12 years. Um, and my wife at the time as well. So I had to do something to balance the income as real estate wasn't always on the up and up. <laughs> so Man. I got into trucking. Them, and, them, uh, how, 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 was, how, how was the housing market down there uh, in Florida, man? I, I'm... Uh, especially in Miami, I, I would assume them is some like some expensive houses down there. How would you able to maintain for twelve years? Um, it, it was up and down. Um, Miami, hell, Florida's always been expensive. <laughs> it's super, super expensive now. Um, but back then it was moderate, and um, I got a good telephone voice, so most people didn't know I was African American. <laughs> so I was able to make a lot of close a lot of deals just like that um, but then we had that whole recession thing happen and things started slowing down so I had to get into something else while my wife at the time uh, continued doing real estate so I got into trucking alright so do you feel alright so what the, what, what, what the state of what's going on right now you know we had this you know we had this 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 white person, I'm not even going to give him mention his name or anything like that. He went up into an all black neighborhood into a into a store and, and and shot it up and everything. And he did all that, you know, because of his you know racist beliefs. Being that you was able to close a lot of you know a lot of your deals uh, over the phone, you know, and having them, you know, having the person that 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 you're talking to thinking that you're you know that you're a person from the other side what do you what do you think what do you think it would have been different if they would have found out that you was black you you think the you you think the deal wouldn't, yes. wouldn't go through because of uh you know what they what they believe or anything like that i mean i'm definitely on the negotiating side yeah, Florida real estate is kind of funny like that. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, Caucasian or um, light-skinned Hispanics that do real estate. And it's not always quite fair when it comes to African-Americans. They want to, you know, really low bid you and things like that just to crash a deal. So, yeah, I did most of my um, transactions as the listing agent over the phone and electronic uh, signatures. So I kept stuff moving until, yeah, of course, the whole recession thing happened and everybody was foreclosing. <laughs> so, you know, uh, trucking and, and, and real estate go hand in hand. I mean, you know, a lot of guys right. that get into trucking, you know, the, the next uh, hustle for them would, would be to get into uh, real estate and vice versa. Um you know, you was in real estate for twelve years. What what was the what was the um I don't know, what what was the inclination to come to trucking for? Uh just something uh a little stability. Um I never really worked for anybody. I stopped working for people when I was nineteen. I'm thirty eight now. So <laughs> I never was really interested in a nine to five, so I needed a career or industry that I can move at my own pace and make as much money as I would like to make. So right. trucking seemed like the best fit for that. Now trucking down in Florida is kind of scarce. <laughs> I don't easy, truck in easy, Florida. <laughs> e easy, to, easy to get in, 
hard to get out, you know, for, you yeah. know, for some freight. But you being right. And, and some, you know, mega carriers don't even hire out of Florida. So exactly. did you did you go to school for your CDL or did you jump on to a yes, I, to a carrier yeah, I went, and get your CDL? School. Yeah, I went I went to school um, at the time. Um, the what is the reemployment unemployment office was paying for licenses and certifications if you wanted to change careers. So I took that route. They paid for my uh, CDL outright. I think I was out of pocket like two hundred bucks. Oh, um, however, when I started trucking, I left Florida and I moved to Ohio to Cleveland. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on! You came up to the great state of Ohio, <laughs> bro? Into my home city? What's good? What's good? You still yeah, you wait, you, you still up. you you still up here, or you 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 moved back to Florida? I just recently, um, a month ago, just moved back to North Florida, Jacksonville. A month ago, but yeah, I've been. Been up in uh, Cleveland for about five years. Well, Shaker Heights. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm I'm in Cleveland. I'm well. I'm well familiar of uh, Shaker Heights, Warrensville, and all the surrounding areas, man. So yeah, God damn it, man. So you said bump being in the cold, bro. You said let me go back home to Florida. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, so um, so yo, so majority of your trucking career was was you were staying in Ohio, which is an easy state to 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 get on with a mega carrier or a smaller carrier for that matter. Uh when right. you got up to when you got up to Ohio, what what was the company you started with and are you still with that same company now? Uh I I started with Warner Enterprise. Um so I, I did a year with them and then I bought my truck. Um and then I contracted with them for like the next three years um, as a trainer and owner operator. Okay, okay, okay. So the first year in, you 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 went in there, studied, uh, learned the business yeah. and everything, and you just said to yourself at that time, "I want to go ahead and get a truck." Did you did you lease oh, yeah. did you lease the truck? from Warner or did you buy the truck outright after you saved up for it? Um, I, I did a lease purchase with them. So, which was, which was fair. And at the time, you know, when I first started trucking, you're not making a gazillion dollars. So <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of money saved and, um, getting into trucking too helped me pay down a lot of debt that I had. So I focused on that first and that's why that first year you know, I just stayed with them um, before I got my truck, get my debt paid down. But yeah, I got into uh, one of those um, lease to own trucks, which I end up paying off uh, fairly quickly for like five hundred bucks. They gave me the truck, and and that was it. <laughs> so <laughs> made what, my payments every month. I can make extra payments every month to get it paid down quickly. So why did you get in? I, and you know the correlation with 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 lease ops with with uh, with a few mega carriers, they go lease op, but they also turn around and they 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 jump right into right into training. Is is that because is is that because y'all wasn't making as much as you thought you was making when you went lease op with them, or was it because you wanted to do it? You know, just to show oh, the next on the generation. Side, just, yeah, on the training side. Okay, I started. I started training as a company job. So. Um, oh, oh, and the oh, numbers oh, okay, worked for okay, me. Okay, as okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I started training as a company driver, and the the numbers made sense moving into owner op because I don't pay the other driver, but I still get the miles, so it made sense. Um, so I was averaging pretty well as a company driver, and I did the numbers. I, I saw how much everything cost. Like, that was my whole year was looking at cost, how much everything cost, maintenance cost, um, and what I'm making uh, per mile. Because, you know, they were paying cent per mile at the time. Um, so the numbers made sense to move into owner-op because my pay uh, per mile increased dramatically, um, even though... I had a lot of dependents saying, oh, they're not paying you enough. You need to get a truck on the outside. 
five hundred dollars works a lot better than coming up with ten percent at the time. <laughs> so, and I was averaging about forty five hundred five thousand miles a week on my truck. So, but okay, that, that worked out. That's what's up. All right, so you, uh, it, you, you know, me and you talked in the background before we get into that. Uh, when I reached out to you the first time about that, uh, about that ticket in uh, in uh, Walmart, but you told me that that wasn't yours. That was one of your uh, right. trainees. One of my students. Yeah. But uh, right. but what happened to you with with TikTok, bro? I'm listen. I'm I'm going to just throw it out there like everybody else. I'm I am not a fan of that app at all. I just uh, you know it's you know for me it it brings me content. And it does bring me, you know, me, like I said, I'm not a fan of it personally, but on another right. on another level, I have met some real good people off of this app. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, you know, the people that right. I came came across and had some good, interesting conversations with them. I, I really I, I can say that. But as the app as a whole, I am I, I'm, I am definitely, definitely not a fan of this app, bro. So what happened, man? Why, why, why TikTok put you in jail, man? <laughs> well, I'm in jail quite a bit <laughs> on TikTok. Um, I have like good five, almost six years of either stuff I've recorded or my students recorded, and they sent to me because I'm in communication with all of them still, and most of them they own their own trust now. But um, yeah, I have tons of it, and some of it, I mean. I don't think it's an issue. I mean, it's just regular stuff you see. But, yeah, they be hitting me with the community guidelines. Oh, no shop value stuff. Uh, nothing where, you know, a person could have potentially been injured and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I've probably got about oh, 20 videos that have gotten taken down. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me tell you why, bro, because it's a lot of... It's a lot of weird shock value people getting hurt on this app every fucking day. And it's like when somebody <laughs> takes something and maybe repost it with a stitch or 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 uh, a duo or even if you take the video itself and you talk about it. Yeah. TikTok, uh -huh. TikTok want to. TikTok want to punish you for it, you know. And but before right. the, the funny thing about it is, is that you'll generate a lot of views on it. You'll generate maybe about oh, yeah. two thousand, five thousand views, and then up all of a sudden, TikTok will swoop in and take it down. And you'll most be like, most of these videos, most of these videos have almost a million views, and then it gets taken down. <laughs> and that's crazy, man. That 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 is unbelievably crazy because you get the original video from TikTok. Do you think exactly? Do you uh, do you do you think like me and like others? Uh uh uh. Well, I'm not a TikTok creator, so I'm not even going to put myself in that category. But do you think other creators like yourself feel that there's a double standard with uh with TikTok and everything? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I see, I see crazy videos. I'm like, this video's got like two hundred something thousand likes, and my video's nowhere near that. I mean, it might be a small fender bender. And they're like, oh no, top value. <laughs> wow. So, I don't get it. I, and that's crazy. So, so Trucker Duray, man, tell me, tell me a few of the, you know, a few of the videos that you that 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 you probably been in a in a situation with uh with one of your trainees was well, I'm I'm sure all of them wasn't good. Um oh as far as things we've seen on the road and recorded. Well things that you know like you know you get a trainee and the trainee don't listen to you or anything like that. What what's your experience uh with with My, some of the, okay. with some of the trainees had, as you're training? I've I've had all races and all genders on my truck. And mostly they're on my truck for about two and a half weeks. Um, so, and they do most of the driving. Um, so I, if it was perfect, pretty much, it was almost unbelievable. Like for the 
<laughs> probably the first four. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, classic kids who went pop. Def to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales who won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart could bars, you got bops. Heard you writing Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Yellow fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.